So here we go, the amazing benefits of intermittent fasting and how to create an effective daily plan. Let's go through this. All right, so again, we're, talk, we're gonna talk about depleting the liver storage of glucose, okay? So after approximately 12 hours, you know, science has shown that you could actually deplete the liver from glycogen and get it to extremely low levels of glucose after a 12 hour period. So that's what we're aiming at in the beginning here. And you may become irritated due to the lack of glucose when going through this process. Some people do, some people don't. So it just depends. At this point, you're at more of more than a hungry stage. You're, you're at a, what's known as a hangry stage, get it? So, uh, you know, it, it is irritating if you get to that point, but I'm gonna talk about some ways to uh, make it go smoother for you later on in this slide. So uh, now you'll, you'll feel lightheadedness, hunger, cravings, and it's only about, I think it's about two to three day period. If you could push through that, keep going forward, you'll be okay. Okay, this is obviously caused by low blood sugars, low glucose, but once you go through that, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna jump right into, your body's gonna go to work and you're gonna jump right into the, the releasing of fat to the bloodstream for energy and that's literally burning fat to survive, right? So that's what you want to do. You want to tap into the ketones, okay? And move into the ketosis stage that I want to talk about. So if you give up and you don't push through those two to three, those first two to three days, uh, you won't see the amazing benefits uh, known to occur with intermittent fasting. So push through that and I'll talk about how you can uh, make it smoother later. But the biggest benefits of fasting has nothing to do with weight loss, okay guys? Nothing to do with weight loss. Everything to do with the benefits I'm about to uh, demonstrate for you. Now, although fat burning does happen in, in large amounts, okay? Just just get that through your mind. You're gonna get fat, you're gonna get fat loss. Uh, at first you'll lose weight, but then you'll stop, and I'm gonna show you why it stops, okay? I'm gonna show you why it stops soon, but first I wanna show you the the, the, the beginning triggers uh, when when ketones are released, okay, you're going to trigger a release of a molecule called BDNF. It doesn't matter what it stands for, just know that these molecules uh, are strengthened neurons, they strengthen the neuron connectivity, and that improves learning, that improves memory. I mean, it's a huge game changer for your brain, okay? so. This helps reduce the chances of you developing dementia in the future or even Alzheimer's. So huge thing to know about uh, BDNF. Okay, now the next huge benefit that I'm gonna talk about more in detail, uh, and that's gonna be uh, autophagy, okay? So this here is basically when you tap into autophagy, that's gonna enhance, okay, your survival mode. So your immune system is gonna shoot up. You're gonna be stronger. And what happens is that it's, you know, it's basically recycling garbage. So, you know, dead cells, a bunch of, a bunch of pathogens, bacteria, uh, and I'm gonna show you how that works. This here, uh, in the cells we have what's known as ly lysosomes, right? And those behave like garbage disposals. Okay, so lysosomes are basically recyclers that take out damaged parts and break them down and they just don't go to the garbage. They actually break them down and then they make new tissue from it. For example, you know, adipose tissue, they make amino acids, and that just, you know, brings up cell remodeling. Okay, so it's known as cell remodeling. Those are lysosomes. Keep in mind, that happens through autophagy, and that's why it's so important to know and tap into this. And this happens, okay, with intermittent fasting and fasting. So... Here's the benefits, anti-aging and immune protection, right? It promotes new brain cell growth. It promotes new cardiac cell growth for the heart, for the liver, so on and so forth. Corrects insulin resistance, guys, okay? Or insulin uh, uh, sensitivity. Uh, destroys fungus, the parasites. Destroys viruses, bacteria, other intracellular pathogens. And it breaks down hard to absorb misfolded proteins. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's another term for another another section here, but just very quickly, these are, you know, these are 
amyloid diseases that, that occur because of the misfolded proteins, okay? And the body can't break them down. So what happens? You end up plugging your entire system with these, uh, you know, amyloids, and, and that's that becomes very toxic, and it could lead to issues in the liver, the kidneys, the eyes, the heart, the brain, you name it. So that's going to be broken down with lysosomes. So it's huge, huge for us to do this, guys. Now, the instant benefits from autophagy, obviously you'll right away notice better mood swings after you go through your craving state, right? Uh, memory, <clears throat> your memory starts to improve, focus, your, your attention to detail, uh, learning comes easier, you sustain energy, deeper sleep. For a lot of us that can't sleep well, you get a lot, much, much more quality sleep. Uh, improves your cardiovascular function, saves lots of money when eating less frequently. Okay, now we're going to talk about the amounts of food. Okay, you're not, not to worry. It's not going to bring down your amount of calories. So uh, it's basically turn on your self-cleaning oven to wipe out all the junk in the trunk. That's what we're doing with autophagy. Keep that in mind, guys. This is what's happening. I want to show you the hormonal effects here. Check them out. You can read these. You got lower estrogen levels. Of course, guys also have the estrogen hormone. <clears throat> if we could reduce that, then we could avoid too much of fat storage, okay? Increasing testosterone production, that gives you more energy and more muscle retention or muscle growth and fat burning, obviously. Balance out your insulin levels. How would you like to do that? If you are pre-diabetic <clears throat> or you have insulin sensitivity, this is gonna help you a lot. It's gonna reduce your insulin resistance if you're, uh, it's going to avoid, you know, you from becoming from pre-diabetic to diabetic. If you're a diabetic, this is huge for you to be doing intermittent fasting. Of course, talk to your doctor about this. Make sure it's someone that's up to date and open-minded, okay? Uh, and then also increase cortisol. Now, the fight or flight hormone that has a bad rap, right? Cortisol. When you stress, you release cortisol. Now, this is great. This is a great hormone when you're fasting, though. It'll help you burn out the excess glucose that you have, okay? It releases all that fuel, and then you tap into the fat cells that takes you into the ketosis state that I want to talk about. Ketosis, guys, all right? So how do you, or what kind of foods do you have to be consuming while you're in intermittent fasting, right? So when you're breaking the fast, the fast break, I call it, uh, basically what you need to be adding are healthy healing fats, right? That's going to take you into keto adaptation mode and into your meals will go uh you know fats into your meals will go a long way okay remember i talk about the uh glucose curve about the four hours when you eat all the three macronutrients well fat makes that curve longer right okay so it, you know you're more saturated satiated i'm sorry and you're gonna last long before you get hungry again so Whole foods, leafy greens, okay, you, you should be taking about five to seven cups, like it says here, to increase your potassium levels, which is very, very important, and reverse even insulin-resistant problems, okay? So the nutrient-dense foods allow you to get, you know, allow you to fill up more, less hungry, right? And of course, it provides optimal health to your cells. So low to no carbs, no refined carbs, or very little of them, maybe 20 grams of carbohydrates, that's not including... The uh, vegetables, in other words, the leafy greens, all the vegetables, nutrient-dense vegetables, you could eat those unlimited, right? Three to six grams of protein, depending on your bioindividuality, and of course, the remainder in the healthy healing fats. And then on the healthy healing fats, you have to test it out to see, mm, you don't want to feel too bloated, too full, maybe you're overdoing it with that, just listen to your body. If, if you're eating too many fats, you're going to be able to tell, then you need to drop it down. Uh, on the healthy healing fats part, okay? So uh, just pay attention to that. Now, we're eating less, yes, but keeping our calories up, okay? So yes, we're eating less frequently, but we're still gonna be eating the same amount of calories, all right? So, and again, you're eating nutrient-dense food, healthy healing fats, and the protein, so you're covering all the macronutrients in here, and it's just a matter of fixing those ratios that, that I'll be covering shortly. Now, what you want to do when you're in this intermittent fasting, you want to make sure that you're taking plenty of fluids, of course, 
And of course, adding lemon juice to your water is a great way to flush out the uric acid and any other toxins in the body, okay? Because it does raise up your uric acid a little bit when you're intermittent fasting. So you want to make sure you get plenty of fluids. Lemon's great. Also, you know, maybe adding a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar is another great source and you've got it going there. Now, salt, salt, which is sea salt or Himalayan salt to avoid fatigue. You know, you're feeling kind of sluggish, lethargic. Maybe you're lacking a little bit of that salt. So you want to add an increase in sodium chloride to help you with those electrolytes, bring you out of that fatigue state, okay? And one, te one teaspoon daily while you're in the intermittent fasting state is great. And potassium, vitamin B, uh, you know, the, the, the B vitamins can release uh, or can ease a transition. So if you want to make things smoother, you know, you're craving, you're hungry, you're moody, when you add some vitamin, the, some uh, B vitamins and some potassium, it's going to make that a lot easier for you. Okay, so nutritional yeast tablets and electrolytes, no Gatorade, of course. You can make your own or you can buy electrolyte powder. Okay, so those are the ways to make things easier for you. Now, going into ketosis, of course, many of us have a regular diet of three to five times a day, which includes the snacks. So we never really release ketones. So therefore, we don't get to tap into the benefits of ketosis. And, and that's due to the way we're taught. You know, we brought up, we, we even study this in, 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 uh, in school. It teaches in nutrition the five meal plan, right? I mean, I learned this and I was and I taught it to people for many, many years. And that's the way it is. But, you know, with the new science coming up, proving intermittent fasting works, uh, this is something we all need to take advantage of and look into. Okay, so keep in mind. So how do you safely introduce your body to intermittent fasting and begin to trigger the benefits and maximize all the results? Okay, so how do you do that? So we're going to start reducing uh, meal plans. That's one thing, right? So we start reducing meal plan times slowly but surely. Remember, step-by-step -step process. You don't want to go too fast and furious with intermittent fasting. Uh, you know, you might get sick, might drop your, your immune system a little bit, going too fast. So you want to introduce it nice and slow. Okay, so obviously we have, like I was talking about, we have that traditional way of eating, which is breakfast, lunch, dinner. And you have your snacks in between, and some of us have snacks after dinner. So those, this is this five meal plan, uh, you know, that goes from early morning to late night. That's the average person's diet, right? Known as the fat, fat American diet. So if you're a world class athlete, you could do this. If you're under 20 years old, you're a child, and you need more, you need more food because you metabolize so fast, right? Then yeah, that's okay. You got this this plan. There's some of us that. Sometimes we're into these uh, events that we're going to be doing. We're working out so hard. We're doing, you know, uh, a lot uh, of cardiovascular and strength training and whatever it is. It's uh, then this is this is allowed. You know, this is you're going to get the the, the glucose and uh, and take advantage of of that energy. But if you're older, you can't be doing this. And you're, if you're not a super, you know athlete, uh, then you shouldn't be doing this. And this is something that that we're learning and we're seeing uh, from all the symptoms that we get, right? So here's the symptoms when you're stuck into this five meal plan uh, idea that was brought into our you know, our society. So here, here it is. You got belly fat, you have fatigue, you have memory loss, lack of focus, cravings, high blood pressure, anxiety, depression, diabetes. Sound familiar? Yep. Well, all this does is it, it adds to insulin resistance, guys. High levels of insulin in the body. So what I want to do is make sure uh, we start slow. We start crunching it down. Uh, start crunching intermittent fasting down. So if you are stuck in that five meal a day, things so then here's how we're going to work it okay as you can see here okay you're going to be doing is 
bringing in these hours. So if you're eating at 7 a.m., bring it into 9 a.m. You're eating at 8 p.m., you want to bring it into 7 p.m. So start crunching it in here. And now all of a sudden you get rid of some of those snack periods. And now you got, you're got into the four a day, right? You got three meals and a snack. And eventually, you as you're going through this in a week, maybe it takes you a couple days, maybe three days, maybe a whole week. Then what you want to do is drop the snacks, drop the late one, drop the early one, drop breakfast completely, and start with 12 p.m. lunch, okay? This might be the second week. I'm not sure. It's up to you. So you got 12 p.m., you got a 4 p.m. snack, 7 p.m. This is three meals a day, slow increments. Work your way into this, and then eventually you'll end up with two meals a day. So fast rewind on this once again. You bring in those meals, right? You start getting rid of the snacks, the late snack for sure. Bring in your dinner to 7 p.m. And then eventually you drop breakfast entirely. And that will get you to graduate from five to three meals. And then you'll be able to start moving into the two meal plan. Get it? Okay, so the best ratios to mobilize the most fat burning and lower the most insulin is a two meal plan. And let me show you how it works. So you're at the three meal plan. Let's just say you're eating breakfast at 8 a.m. You're eating your dinner at 8 p.m. And, and then you have your lunch at 12 p.m. This is what you do all the time. You didn't even have to work into the three meal plan. You already do this, all right? Well, again, we want to bring, crunch in everything, get it here closer, right? You start eating breakfast at 10 a.m. So lunch at 2 p.m. Then you got your dinner at 6 p.m. You're in the three meal plan there, but then, you need to transition into the two meal plan to start getting the most effects uh, of, of intermittent fasting. And this, this is the ratio. 12 p.m. is when you start eating or breaking the fast and 6 p.m. is when you, end, when you end it. So there you have a period of 18 hours between dinner and the next time you break your fast. I know it sounds like a lot, but like I say, you work yourself into it. And then eventually, when you want to really reap the benefits, you want to probably go into a 24-hour fasting. Then you simply let go of the dinner. And, and here it is right here, 12 p.m. Okay, guys? Now, fast rewind on this one as well. You got your, you got your uh, three-meal plan there, right? You got your lunch. You got your dinner. All squared off. Eighteen hours between dinner and the next day is, and, and here's the ratio. Here's the best ratio. Eighteen to twenty-four hours is the optimum. These are the, I mean, the scientifically measured ratios. So this is something you need to take advantage of, right? So there it is. That's the ratios right there. Work yourself into it. It might take you two weeks, three weeks to get into that. But that's what you do, guys, exactly that. Here, uh, I wanted to show you intermittent fasting versus ketogenic diet. As you can see, average diet, obviously not going to take you into a, into a keto state. Uh, ketogenic diet, there it is. You see it. Uh, there's plenty of books on ketogenic diets. This is great for uh, people with diabetes, great with people with uh, you know uh, epileptic seizures, uh, and this is introduced by dietitians, and it works. But here it is. Here's the numbers. I'm not lying to you. Intermittent fasting shows it right there. Man, it's probably like tenfold, way better than a ketogenic diet. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, it doesn't mean you you don't apply a ketogenic diet when you're in intermittent fasting. You could do it. You do keto and intermittent fasting together. All right. So just wanted to show you what uh, the difference is here. Now, obviously, I said science has proven that fasting has way greater benefits than just a ketogenic diet. So here is the question on cholesterol. I know I'm going to get a lot of that. Well, what happens to my cholesterol if I'm going with high uh, fat diet or, you know, healthy healing fats, of course. Now, when you release fat from your own body, cholesterol will also come out because obviously it's triglycerides, right? And, and cholesterol is what the breakdown is. So... You're going to get that in your bloodstream. 
it will increase, but it increases it temporarily. Okay, so keep in mind, most of our cholesterol is made from our body, 90% of it. 10% will come from this type of diet. So this type of eating here. So not to worry. We need cholesterol for our hormones. We need it for vision. We need it for brain. We need it for nervous system. We need it for you know healing ourselves from, from lesions in our arteries and other parts of our body. So cholesterol is important. You want to talk about cholesterol. That's a, a topic for another another time as well. And I do have a big article on that. So I'll make sure I share that with you. Uh, again, measuring your waist circumference. This will tell you if you are doing it right. Obviously, if there's no change, something's up. And we need to look at it. And uh, if there is change, then you'll notice right away with your waist circumference. Now, don't use the weight scale. Throw it away. Okay? It's not a true measure. Uh, you know, you're going to be noticing that your atrophied muscles that you have. Okay? Because obviously, most people, when they come to this state, uh, they're atrophied. You know, they have a lot of body weight in them, but it's mostly fluids and fat. What's going to happen when you get these... Uh, the the human growth hormones that you are creating yourself through your pituitary gland, okay, uh, you alone are gonna are gonna are gonna produce these human growth hormones, and it's gonna improve muscle, uh, you know, hypertrophy, or or you're going to either gain more weight with muscle, or you're going to stay at the you know at the same weight, okay. So don't look at weight scales for that, All right now. What do you do during intermittent fasting? Well, you could apply high intensity interval training. Uh, the ideal is two times per week. That's optimal. Okay. Now, unless you're 20 years old, then you can do it three to five times. But most of us aren't. So if you're 30 or 40 or you're 50 or over, you know, keep it down to two times a week. Uh, take advantage of that intermittent fasting with high interval training. It's, it's two times a week. Try it out, guys. Give yourself a month with this. You know, three weeks, really not going to help any, okay? So I'll be providing more information about this intermittent fasting. You know, go through a QA, and a answer any questions you guys might have, all right? So other than that, that's about it, about intermittent fasting and this uh, keynote presentation. Thank you.